Are you always coming up with ideas? Do you marvel at successful business owners? Do you hate being told what to do? Ever take things apart just to see how they work? Are you a dreamer? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tapes' Specialties is the world leader in tape manufacturing and specialty conversion with over 40 years of experience. In addition to our pro brand of high-quality specialty adhesive tapes, we provide contract converting services that help improve your profitability, streamline your supply chain, and reduce inventory cost. We offer the most complete range of converting capabilities in the industry, such as... Cloth tape, double coated tape, specialty tape, paper tape, masking tape, vinyl tape, carton sealing tape, adhesive transfer tape, duct tape, phone tape, electrical tape, filament tape, foil tape, reflective tape. And the tape just keeps on rolling. Visit us online today at www.protapes.com or call us at 800 345 Pro Tapes, it's just how we roll. No problem, man. Good. So, I told more scarce, you know, I could show these things at Club XL. Yeah. Right? Because they had just opened the place. Uh, they came to me right away because they knew my affiliation with City Garden. So they wanted some tips on, you know, what they could do with the club. And I told them to keep keep it the same as possible. Keep the Thursday night at least because there's your money right there. Yep. Right? City Gardens paid the rent on Thursday night people out there you know it wasn't the concerts and all that that made frank and randy some money it was the thursday night was consistent and it was off the chain so that paid all the bills to lawsuits start coming in so all right i got access to that place so i get some more canvas i'm like okay this is a little collaborative project but i gotta closely watch it because it's mine right i invited this gentleman to my studio so you know, in result, I've got to control it. So I let him get down every time, 10 minutes. I would go down to the restaurant and have my dinner, hang out with people, do a little bit. You know, I, that was my zone. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Eight years of living down there and the disco and all that, you know what I mean, going on. So that was like my world. I never had to leave or go anywhere for nothing. So he's in there, he upstairs thinking, he comes down, I go take a look, that's great, I'll roll that up, put up another one. I got, we end up with 12 of them, right? So that's my encounter with him. Okay, the next one, Will Caso. Now, John Narr, the late John Narr, the guy who put the face on graffiti, published the first book of graffiti artists, was living in Trenton playing Scrabble at Eric Marwar's bookstore. Imagine that. So, John Nahr decides to have a salon and gather all the artists together. Yeah, yeah. He's seen some talent. So he, he wanted an stress publishing. He said, well, you got all this talent here, why don't you publish it? Because nobody knows about it. Nobody hears about what's going on. You need to get it out. The Trentonian's not gonna publish anything good about the city, let alone anything about art. That's not what they do, yeah. right? We know this. So John wants to get the artists together. He starts a salon, formally a salon. They could, some people call a round table, you know, pick your brain, but a salon is where you actually use people's ideas, incorporate them and develop a product or a show. Or, or something like that of that nature. Anyway, John gathers writers, he wants artists, he wants poets, and the target was to go to Trenton Central High School and extract the talent that was there. And our first publication, the Trenton Art Review, we would publish the kids' talent along with the local talent that existed at the time. Sounds like a great idea, right? Sounds good to me, right? 
Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like, wow, this is just what Trenton needs. Yeah. <laughs> a, a publication, something that's actually talking about some, some boots on the ground stuff, right? Because before that, what we had, Kev, the Nubian News. Yeah. Nubian News wasn't producing no art articles. You know, more political and more, you know, social, but not visual arts, right? So John's idea was pretty sound and solid. Eric got on board. Chipped in, chipped in his space. Now he was willing. You know, we know Eric Marlar now. He can't hide. He did the interview. Yeah, yeah. You know, we know him. We know you, Eric. So, Dynamite Brother, um, he was willing to help John organize this publication, get it together. They couldn't figure out whether to do it monthly, quarterly, annually, what? Because of money. Right? But the idea, again, was to, 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 to highlight the talent. And publish it. Yeah. So while we're doing these meetings, there was a co- couple heritage days things that happened before it all ended, you know. And I met Caso, Leon, Leon's partner, a friend at the time. I don't know how they were acquainted, but we did a heritage day together. And Caso painted some shirts. The kids didn't quite want. They liked them painting his their name, but they wanted something else. So I said, Cosa, I got some t-shirts. Why don't you, I sell them my t-shirt and you put the name on my t-shirt so we're collaborating together and, you know, we both make money. Yeah, yeah. So we did that, right? Now we're at the salon and this guy is sitting in the back drawing all the time, but he ain't never contribute to the conversation or, or you know, what we're going to publish and how we're going to do it. Again, it's Leon, Anthony Fearon, uh, Beth Planky, there's a couple of other people who are artists. Brian from Blue Method, you know, the musician. Brian would attend some of these salons, and, and uh, Casa was sitting in the back. Yeah. I didn't know the brother, didn't know his talent, didn't know anything about him. Yeah. I made an attempt. I'm there at the salon. I, I'm, with, <laughs> I'm, I'm with John Norb. Which, if you know his history and, and all of that, you'd be like, you would better show up here. This dude put graffiti on the map. Yeah. So, met those two guys along the way. Uh, I met other artists by attending some of these openings they have at uh, Trenton Social, which was Urban Word Cafe at the time. I remember that. We yes. had open. We had open studios. You could come by on the Thursday, Friday night. You know, so I did meet people who now come to me and say, oh, I think I saw your studio or whatever. I'm like, really? That's like a whole lifetime ago. So um, I met these local artists, Kevin, and these local artists know of me. But the problem that has happened and why I don't feel comfortable with it is the fact that where's the communication breakdown at? Whereas these people don't know me, it's, it's where I have a problem. With. Yeah, yeah. And for example, I'm here, been living here uh, in this particular studio for eleven years. Yes. I've lived in Princeton off and on for over twenty, yes. twenty five or so. Right? Ex girlfriend, yes. this and that, thrown out of the house and back, and all this stuff. You know what I mean? Living in the studio, living in Princeton, living in the studio, going from Princeton to Trenton, Princeton to Trenton, back and forth. And she get mad at me, she throw my shit out. Now I'm back in the studio. Stuff like that going on, right? So here's the funny thing. They started this art jam thing. It's uh, with, uh, home front or something. Starts this fundraiser with artists yeah. up here. Now, I don't know anything about it. No one told me about it. No one contacted me. No one said a damn thing. Yes. But I go to one of these openings up here and run into everybody. Okay. Right? Gotcha. I see them all with the artwork, just as proud, happy, smiling, getting the wine, you know, and enjoying the glory. You know, here in affluent Princeton. Yeah. I live here, mind you. Yeah. Now, I walk in the room, fucking crickets. Because what happened to me was I ended up going to South Brunswick after I lost my studio and my health conditions got worse. I had to live with my sister in South Brunswick for four years. Yes. Took four years for all this erasure 
to happen. Yes. And when I show back up and I go to this art show and everybody's got their work on the wall here in Princeton, I'm just looking at them like, why, why, why didn't anybody even reach? No one tried to contact me. You left me for dead. Yeah. But you know, let me let me let me let me ask this question though. So you being an entrepreneur, you being artistic, did that? And you know, sometimes you know, artists and entrepreneurs are aloof. Did that really matter to you that they weren't reaching out to you? Because you're no. still, you're still doing your own thing. But so so my so my so my question now is now that we are sharing this conversation or now that we're having this conversation, right? What steps mm-hmm. can you take? What steps can they take to make amends and and to really begin to highlight the 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 artist or the artistic community with you being um not necessarily at the forefront, but more in the mix, more of them communicating with you. How do we, how do we do that? Well, Kara, this is the unfortunate part. Okay. Sounds wonderful, but my body, I am physically now in crisis. Yes. Even just a, a little disorder here and there now. Now I'm in crisis mode. Yes. Okay. Meaning I got to make every day count. Yes. Every minute count. Yes. If it ain't a minute I'm active, I'm on the floor in traction. Yes. For an hour, an hour twice a day. Yes. Just to walk. But but let me let me. So that's one thing. Let me let me. But stop. let me get to the to the men's the men's thing and the fixing and all of this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, is that we started with you asked me about community. Yes. Now, anybody can be a part of a community, but what a community has to understand is um, it's not about everybody arriving at the same place as a collective, because that's not going to happen. Yes. Right? Because everybody's got different skill levels. Yes. Everybody's coming from different places. Yes. Everybody's got different dreams and goals. Yes. So if you want to be respectful and mindful of other people's careers and that they do other things and, and that, you know, they may be in the game or have been longer and have more experience, more knowledge, the whole nine. As a consultant, then saying my angle would be, I'm a hundred dollars an hour, point blank, point blank. I've listed as before COVID or during COVID, did some work for West Elm here in Princeton as an interior design, um, consultant and that's what I am now gotcha. or I can consult on other things however I work with PayPal yep. you put that money in my account we talk but I ain't giving a damn thing away for free anymore I'm not consulting with people like some round table to pick my brain and then those who have the economic resources take that idea and run with it and leave me exactly where I am no, 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 Carrie. I'm I'm not asking for them to pick your brain, but what I'm hearing now and what I'm asking is, I'm I'm hoping that once we drop this this uh, conversation, this episode, this podcast, that the art community will say, okay, great interview. I know his backstory. I now know he's in crisis. How can the art community circle the wagon to support him? How can we come uh, come together, right? Because because oftentimes, yeah. right, the community, the artistic community, has been known to 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 help out one another, particularly if 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 they know that one of their uh, members, so to speak, is in crisis. What would what would, would that look like, right? What oh well well what would it look what what it should look like. Well, I mean, that was, no, that was that was a rhetorical question, right? I, I, I mean, I wasn't asking to, to to I wasn't asking to to tell me what it looks like. I'm just saying rhetorically, what would that look like if they all came together to to support you in your crisis moment? Because I well, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm hearing you, and I'm feeling you wholeheartedly. Yeah. But it's so sad to say. My work, and I exist 
Yes. In the real art market. I mean, it's not arts and crafts for me anymore. Yes. It's not the bohemian lifestyle for me anymore. Yes. It's not uh, making money for bars. Yes. And venues that aren't art galleries. Yes. We don't have insurance. Yes. See, I can't even work with anybody who doesn't have any insurance. Yes. Because if I put something that's listed now, I'm saying as of now, again, I'm in the real art market. As of my last show in California, it's just still up right now, but 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 I'm in the real art market. You can go on artsy. I got pieces ranging from five hundred to four thousand bucks. Yes. Okay. Now, if I put a four thousand dollar piece out there for display, and I got people who don't have no insurance. And no handlers and people who just slap things, throw things around, slap them up on the wall. Things are unframed, unfinished, very amateuristic looking, very, do you want to sell it or what type of mentality as far as I go? Because I was a custom framer. I did yes. that for a day job. Okay. Yes. I, I, my pieces are finished. When you come to my studio, look at my collection, pieces are finished. When I show my work, pieces are finished. Yes. They're not laying slapped up raw canvas with some nails showing on the side, yes. you know, or, or, you know, it's just shabby chic. Yes. That's the bohemian art community. That's a bohemian. And I can't, um, no one can rally around me when I'm already represented by a gallery in California. I don't understand. The help can't come from where I come from. It has to come from where I'm going. No, no, I, I, I got that, man. And I, and I don't want us to get into um, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I don't want to uh, lop into one category this conversation, but mm-hmm. but I you know and who am I? Because I can't even draw two f and stick figures. Yeah, right? don't make me laugh. But but but, me laugh. but what I'm saying that one of the things that I, I've 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 heard from doing various uh, interviews on, on on the podcast platform, right? Is that okay. in certain categories, right? Particularly in the art community, right? Trenton is trying to come back. They're trying to create this resurgence, you know, yeah. uh, around art. And so, and so, a lot of the art that's being um, um, shown <laughs> is being very. It's it's done in a very professional manner. And I'm saying to you, because once this episode's drop, I'm going to tag a lot of those folks that you talked about with your permission. Oh, because I, I want there to be not a come to Jesus moment, but I want them to be where, da- damn, that's my dude. And, you know, that's my dude. We've got to support him. And well, I, let me, I have to interject now ahead, and say, I see what in your angle and I love the whole premise of what you're doing for the area. Yeah. My point is, these individuals, especially ones if I'm going to name them by name, yes. they made their choice. Um, and I had to deal with that choice that they made. I didn't make no choice. I'm just like, I'm here, right? Okay, now, to, to, to let's say, let's just push all that old stuff I just talked about and how I met people and how that happened. And say this, okay, there is a, something can happen down there. I could instrumentally be available for something, yes. but my ideas and plans, man, are huge. They go beyond uh, just having a festival or trying to resurrect art all night. It goes beyond that for me. So let's say, okay, we need help to bring back art all night. <clears throat> okay, I got a simple solution for that. Simple. It's simple, and I'm not going to disclose it in this interview because I know how people do in Trenton. If you say something, all of a sudden they're off and running. You're sitting here like, that's what I thought about. Yeah, yeah. But, so but... I would love to be instrumental in getting it up to where it should be competitive with the rest of pe- towns like Philly and things like that. But you have so much work to do on the just – basic educational level of what arts and how it is supposed to be managed and maintained. I mean, I just have a book right now, Kevin, if I read off the table of contents, you will know how much knowledge that I have and can turn around anything. Yeah. 
if there was a party of people as knowledgeable as I am, I would have to teach a class on the, I got the title right here, French Art Market, A Sociological View. This book talks about the art market from 1967 and nothing has changed, okay? It's the same form of the same pattern. These local people don't even know what I know. So I got to teach. Then I got to uh, say, okay, we need funds. Stop going for the grants. And actually, we need somebody to get private investment in there, whereas we're not relying on the stipulation of the grant money. Yeah, but let me let me stop you again, because you you my you my dude, man. You you my dude. Trust and believe. I know, and I'm ready to rip and roll. You know, I, I, I'm short on time here, even on life. So you know, I ain't playing. I know, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Time is of the essence, right? And so I I want I want this podcast, I want this conversation to kind of be a catalyst, man. Like, like let me get you to the table with the people, so you guys can face to face you know, hash out your differences so we all could all make some money together as as Trenton begins to experience a re-resurgence of the art community. Okay. Now I, I'm I'm on you I'm on board with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm on board with that. Just give me a hundred dollars an hour. Well I, I I'm on that brother, I, I, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I I can't I can't speak to that, but let me but let me but let me tag folks in the conversation and let's see yeah, what, do that. and let's see what they're working with man because you, I'm not, you, you I'm not saying a word because I know what I know I, you yeah, know what I, I mean I know you know what you know but I'm also saying let me put you in touch with the other folks who know what they know and let's see if there's some commonality man you, you, okay, you, okay, you, I'm with that. You my, I'm with that. You, you my dude, and so based on this conversation, man, it's it seems it seems like it seems what? like with the the and I'm probably wrong for saying this, and I apologize. It seems like anything that has to do with the build out, right? Of yeah. The Trenton Art Community, you should be. At the table, when, I should be when the when the when the vision is being written, or when the vision yeah. is being rolled out, or when the the thought or the notion of how do we go to the next level, you should be yeah. at the table with the decision makers. That's all I'm going to say. And you so, know all I need. Well, you know all I need, brother. Yes. All you got to do is give me a car and a driver and a time. Okay. And, and I'm there. And who knows that based on this dropping of the episode, they might say, damn, if that's all we got to do, I'll go up and pick his ass up. <laughs> that's all you got to do when you have your check ready. Yeah, and we in All right. All right. Okay. Man, let me tell you, Kevin, we can now enjoy and laugh because you know we're boys, right? Yeah. And people just don't know I don't play and I never have played. That's why you don't see me around. Yeah sipping wine and smiling around the room, acting like I'm trying to be somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If if my time is that valuable, and it is now, because again, every minute counts, yeah. um, I'm not into any celebration when there ain't nothing to celebrate. Yeah. All right, now these art <laughs> folks, if, and again, this is if, and I'm sure there's people out there that are way beyond what I'm even saying, saying, wait a minute, this person really knows what he's saying and he's ready to go and he ain't playing around. And I'll tell you what, you know, I can give you drawing, elevations, renderings, floor plans of an entire block of downtown. Because you know why? There's five buildings down there that I've actually had my hands on the architectural blueprints. I ran those blueprints of those buildings. I know where the bathrooms are. I know where... At one point, I knew where every single car, to everything you could go, but five buildings down there in Trenton because I ran the blueprint, right? Now, the vision I've had, and we mentioned this earlier, what I would like to see about the big plans and all this, I have my own. But in terms of everybody else, I have that plan too. It's just y'all have to really step up and educate yourselves as to what an art fair is, what is a gathering of that many people, 
you know, 2,000 people overnight. My solution, I told them to move that downtown for the first four years. Okay, now you got their attention. Time to move it downtown. Let's move it downtown. Downtown needs the attention, not up here at Southside. This could be another facility, but this art thing got to go downtown. That was my argument. I mean, 14, 10 years ago. Gotcha. Right? So now to fix it, I would be interested in resurrecting it simply because I got phone calls from around the world. Mm -hmm. This is what people don't realize. From around the world asking me, am I okay? Mm -hmm. Because they knew I would be at that event in Trenton that night. People around the world knew I would be there and called me up that morning. I didn't know what happened. What was going on? Matter of fact, I was so naive. I went down to get my artwork. I said, shoot, what happened? Shoot, I'm going to get my stuff. I ain't give up these people. They're crazy. The whole thing shouldn't happen in the first place, you know? And I want my artwork out of there and, like, you know, good luck with this. But it can be fixed. You just have to think bigger than what most people are willing to think. Like, when I talk, one particular person won't name, oh, that's too progressive. Nothing's too progressive if you ain't had nothing going on. Nothing's too progressive of an idea, right? If we're suffering that bad and we don't have the community that we, and somebody comes up with an amazing, innovative idea and you get shot down by saying it's too progressive, then you all ain't ready to do nothing but talk. So give me a car. Pick me up. Have that check ready. We can sit down for two hours. I'll give you a solution in two hours. I'll give you a drawing in five hours of what I'm talking about. That's how I operate, which I never had a chance to express or do in my life until I built that studio down there in Trenton and showed them how I could build things, <clears throat> show them what I could do, right? I got pictures of it. Nobody else took pictures for that construction project. You know why? Because they don't have the vision and passion I do. Yeah, yeah. So this is where I get upset is that I'm like, come on, step it up, y'all. Come on, bring it up. Now that I met you, you know me. But when things come all said and done, you do these projects and you run and do all this stuff, I don't know about it. Then you invite me halfway into it. I don't know what's going on. And I do some little cockamamie uh, pro- little job with it, what I was very upset about. And you slap it up on the wall somewhere I can't even see it. You ain't honoring me. See, that's why I get upset with these cats. Yeah. Because I, I, I literally, I'm that kind of person, man. You want to do this? Let's do it. Yeah. You can do it like this. But when you develop a crew, people, I don't know these people. Mm-hmm. I only met so-and-so. And then you keep changing your name. You just you that. The next week you this. All to avoid what? So you can get another grant? Come on, I know the game. I taught you the game. So I don't even want to play with that, man. It's like, yo, right now, as we speak, Kevin, I just looked online. I'm in the real art market. Yes. With Basquiat, Herring, and everything else. And this is another thing that bothers me. There's a T-shirt floating around down there. It's got Basquiat, Herring, O'Keefe, on the front of it. Yes. Who made that t-shirt? And what relationship do those artists on that t-shirt have with each other? Gotcha. If you know your art history, which is zero. Okay, the different time periods, the only two people you could actually put together is Harry and Basquiat. And how much do you know about them if you don't know anything about me? Gotcha. That's how twisted the history is down there, man. They, they celebrating people that are dead put moshing them together because they're their favorite artists or something? Or what does that say to the community or to the community? When you got artists pasting on a t-shirt that have nothing to do with each other. But, but, but you wearing it proudly, but make the, make the correction now. How should, how yeah, should make it, the correction now? Yeah, but I'm how saying, should you do it now? Yeah, how should, how that, about, no, go no, ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, how should the connect, how should the connection be 
told or how should that connective narrative be told and how should the how should the t-shirt read or be the shown? narrative the narrative should never go outside of its historical context the public historical context there was one thing came before the other their antecedents one thing comes before the other you have to celebrate the one thing that came before the other you can't just mosh it all together and say well that's history come on man Somebody has to know something. Yes, so, okay, O'Keefe, Georgia O'Keefe, Midwest, we know the flowers. We know the sexual looking flowers and all that. Okay, what's she got to do with Frida Kahlo? They're just females. Yep. Their art styles is completely different. Take Herring and Bastia, for instance. Art styles, completely different. Although they were friends, I know them because they were my friends. Yes. So if you want to put anybody t shirt on there, Trent, what have my name? I ain't looking for it. I don't want it, but I'm just saying, how are you going to go reaching for people way out there somewhere in Jabitsville and dead and you celebrate them? Yes. Got nothing to do with Trent. Yes. That's what upsets me about it. There's nothing relative about the history of its, its origin related to the artist that's actually there. And then they're going to celebrate it. And it's all cool. It's all cool in the gang. Now you got a two thousand people all all night rocking these t-shirts that don't make no damn sense. Yep. Straight out of Trenton. What's straight out of Trenton? You're not straight out of Trenton. You made the shirt. Yep. I'm straight out of Trenton. I'm getting confused by these people that are putting these symbols and images out here, and they don't make any historical sense whatsoever. Straight out of Trenton. You know how we do that t-shirt? Put a George Washington powder wig on it. Make it make more sense. <laughs> you know, I work in advertising yeah. and all that. Yeah. You know, so I know this, this is when you put out an image, and this is my first piece, because again, two years old, my father, um, popular mechanics, images is how I communicate. Yep. Object is how I communicate. From buildings to 3D sculpture. I see in 3D. I could draw you and me sitting here on the phone without even looking at you and give you a, a reasonable rendering of how you were sitting there. And you'd be like, God damn, how do you do that? He's not even looking at me mm -hmm. because I have a sense. Yep. 3D. So I'm not dissing anybody. I, mean, I, I love these people, man, because they're artists. I give everybody an A for effort. Look how far we've come. You know, when I told you it was nothing in 89, but handing out some cookies and juice yeah, yeah. at artwork, watching the other artists show their work, coming in Trenton, other artists coming in our town, showing their work, and all we could do is serve cookies and juice. Really? Thank you for that one. But, but, but see, go on. I don't want to disrupt you anymore. No, no. What, no, what I was going to say was we are covering, or we have covered a lot of ground, right? But what I want to do is I want to I want to stop right here, right? And and I want to make sure that from from this point going backwards that at least the listening audience, the art community, the the the, the I guess the the larger art community and the community at large here in Trenton can can digest what you've said and they can and they can you can we can begin to facilitate a visionary or a visual meeting of the minds to kind of put this into some forward moving process, man, a progress, right? So I want to, so I want to stop right here, but we're certainly going to have to make this part two because we've covered a lot of, a lot of ground thus far, but I just want to make sure the listening audience, particularly those in the art community, those who are in economic development can really get a chance to digest this man. Right. Oh yeah, 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 so, absolutely. So, with your permission, brother, let's let's just halt this conversation right here to be picked up soon. But it, but we've given them a lot to digest because we've we've gone back to 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 since you've been born and how you've come to fruition, right? And uh, I want them to digest that part so that we can um, move forward, man, and have a meeting of the mind. Yes, yes, sir. I, I'm, I agree with you, and I knew this interview would not be long enough because, yeah, again, yeah. there's so many tangents, and I can, I, there's so many spinoffs. When we, you say one thing, I can say 10. Yeah, yeah. Ask me one question, again, I got 20 answers. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
um, because, you know, I'm an really isolated individual and I don't really mess with people that much. Yeah. That's all I do is think. Yeah. So, so again, back to, I don't want people to feel I'm a little salty or anything like that. I mean, I just want to explain what happened. Mm -hmm. But in terms of resurrection and this renaissance they've been trying to preach for the past 25 years, you know, there were some simple solutions that just the ball got dropped and some people that got put in place that didn't pretty much know how to maintain or manage what they were even in position for. And it got bigger than them. So, you know, it, 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 when you got that many patrons coming into a town, you know, overnight, you better know Trenton. You better know, you know, it's worst case scenario, which unfortunately we found out. You know what I mean? Yep. So in order to repair that, the most valuable thing, I'm going to give it to them on this, the most valuable thing you got is your mailing list. The second most valuable thing you got is that building itself. You ain't paying rent. So use it to its fullest. Give me a building with free rent and see what I do with it. Yeah, yeah. Give me a bill, give me a bill one of them buildings and give me a dollar and a construction crew. Give me a, give me a dollar in the hallets. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> see, it, it, see what, see what we could do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause they, I've known the Reggie since birth. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, give me some resource and let me write down and draw you an entire street. And you contemplate over that. Yeah. Or building, for instance, I heard you, you mentioned my building in Eric's interview. Mm hmm the federal building, which uh, that's just one of my ideas with that, you know. But the other one you mentioned was the uh, the tech center building, which, man, I had a plan for that for 10, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Now that medical marijuana has been implemented into the economy, my idea is so freaking unbelievable. Who wouldn't go for it? So, anybody listening, you might want to hear about that plan because it's a beautiful one, you know. And I only got it finalized in my mind based on listening to these other gentlemen you've had on your show. I said to myself, with that one, this one, and the other one, and the idea I had 10 years ago, it probably could come to fruition. Yeah, yeah. You know? Especially with Eric's interview. I didn't know he had that kind of power. When I don't want to talk about how Eric and I met and all that. That's personal. Which they'll chuckle about it because I mentioned him in this interview, but he knows and uh his wife knows. We can have fun with it. Got you, got you. <laughs> but um man, the elements are in place. That's what I was feeling. That's what I am feeling and what I've been listening to. And you bringing these guests on and me listening to a childhood friend talk about his experience, you know, and ended up in Bali or wherever he is. So I'm like, okay, I know why, because I don't like living here either Yeah. because of the experience. And, and you know, again, you look at my uh, information online, look like I'm a millionaire. It looked like I already made it. You know what I'm saying? You read all those articles, interviews, TV, all that stuff, man. You know, I'm like, if you look at all that, you would think, wow, this guy's pretty much established. He's a great entrepreneur. He's got bank accounts from here to Switzerland. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. I'm sitting here, got thousands of dollars in medical bills. Got all my artwork. Earned 90% of it. Been working for 40 years. Own 90% of it. Yes. That means I own 90% of my own stock in my own company. Yes. And guess what? I'm ready to liquidate and sell these assets so I can get into these type of businesses you're talking about or, or, or maybe, you know, being involved in other things other than art because I'm really like, I did all this stuff. Yes. Now it's time to sell it. Get rid of it, you know? I'm trying to, I'm trying to move assets into another avenue whereas this burden of having inventory stock maintaining it keeping it healthy which is clean and sellable is a hell of a job for one individual to do being handicapped yeah you know i can't get to the storage area i can't touch not one of my 
older works or anything like that because I can't get in there and touch nothing or end up breaking my neck and dying. Yeah. You know, so so my life's been on hold for a while, but we're having information of it is, man. You know, I didn't hit this level after COVID. During that time, I got represented by a gal in California. And you know how I did that? Which you, you don't, I'm just kind of getting rhetorical is that yeah. Kevin, I built the building of the gallery of itself. Gotcha. Made a model of it. A scale, a small scale model of it. Got my artwork together. Placed it inside it. Showed them where I was going. Put the work inside their building and sent it to them. Yes. They couldn't deny it. Who the hell is this person sending us a building? Our building. He don't even live here. He's 3,000 miles away. Our building, a model of it with his artwork in it. Who does that? Yeah. Somebody desperate, hungry, and on the terror hustle, baby. That's who does that. Yeah. Carrie Maurice does that. Yeah. Builds buildings. Yep. You don't let me show my work. I, I was, if I was healthy, man, I was willing to take a couple pieces up there, walk into a gallery in Chelsea, anywhere, and just nail that shit to the wall and walk out. <laughs> That's how I'm rolling. Got you, got you. I'm not scared. See, people walk around here scared of everything. Scared, scared, scared to talk about Scared, scared to defend somebody. Scared, scared, scared. Well, you're not my kind of person if you're scared. Because I didn't grow up scared. Yeah. This is how I reached the level in which I did today. I couldn't have said this a year ago, two years ago. I'm talking today because my life changed when COVID shut everything down. My life opened up because I'm forced this to open up. Yeah. I wasn't going to be like this no more. Getting dis disrespected. People saying I'm delusional. I don't know this person. I never knew Keith Haring. I, 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 I never knew Basquiat. Uh, oh, but yet I'm walking on every day. People taking my pictures. I can't go shopping now without somebody bringing it up. You look like, I'm like, yeah, I know. Are you an artist? I know. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm not him. He's dead. Yeah. I go to New York. Dude, you should come with me. Most people just won't believe it. Yeah. How you doing? This and that. Walking down the street. I know you. How you know me? It's on the internet. Seriously. So I'm like, all right, I ain't wasting my time with people. I'm paranoid. I've had death threats recently on me. Uh, I've had vandalism to my vehicle. I've had uh, all these negative things happen to me by just being me. So that's why I'm very cautious, protective, and apprehensive of who I don't care if I've known them 10 years ago. They're different people than they were. And, and how they respond to me, you know, I'm very sensitive. I'm like Michael Jackson sensitive. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I can't deal. It's overload. Yeah. Put me in a room full of people and be sweating and shit and all this stuff going to be going on because of my neurological system. It's completely damaged. So, you know, it's, it's kid gloves with me. Yeah. You know, and most people don't know that. They they just, oh, you look good. What the fuck does that mean? Excuse my language. No, good, man. But good. you see a gentleman with a walking stick, two carpal tunnel braces on, and oftentimes a cervical collar. And people still treat me as if that's some kind of style. It's a new style. Oh, a nigga came up with a new style. Instead of saying, wow, look how badly injured this person is. Mm -hmm. He's wearing this stuff so he can even just function yes. on a daily basis. You know? That's why I wear all this stuff. The cane, I'm not trying to be the new Moses of the 2000s. I can't walk without that cane. Well, if I do, not very far. Yeah. But all I hear from folks, man, in public, nice cane. Not even a hello. Not even how you doing today. Nothing. They go straight for the Achilles, looking for something that will make them feel more important or better than me. And that's what draws me inside instead of outside. I, people are just, to me, I'm like, y'all caught up in this TV world and not living in reality. When you come up to somebody like me who's real, you're scared of them. Yeah. But, but or I have to be that weirdo, that freak, or somebody you got to pull your mask up. 
you know, sight on scene because you think I got monkey disease or something. Some new shit they came up with that every 20 years, somehow black people have it. Yeah. But listen, Kerry, we, we, we got to definitely stop this, man, because I want to make sure we hold some of this for part two, though, brother. I want them to digest what we've talked okay. about thus far, brother. But listen, man, you have been real. You have been outspoken, and that's what the platform is all about, the unabridged opportunity to kind of share your story. And we certainly got a lot of that today, brother. So I just want to thank you, man. And uh, let's you and I stay connected. Let's schedule another time for us to do part two, beloved. Yeah. Yes, sir. But let me, did I do good, man? Because the words come out of my mouth, and you can't ask me to repeat it, please. No, no, it don't come. No, no, it no, work you, like that. You, you did fine, <laughs> beloved. That's why I had you on the platform, because I knew you were going to take it away and do you. You did well. I didn't hurt the body feeling I mean, if they do, they do. You know, if they get their feelings hurt, it's okay. I mean, on a bridge platform, you know, you're speaking your truth. Yeah, and there's more of it. That's <laughs> I, for sure. I, I know that's right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was all nervous trying to get you to get me on because, you know, I got to get on with life and, 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 you know, go back to being real me, right? Yeah. You know, because it's like an entertainment yeah. segment. Yeah. Um, I'd be more than happy, man, to come back on the show. I'd be more than happy to even pair with somebody and 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 iron something out that again, I can show you an entire block. I can talk about an entire block. I can talk about buildings. I can talk about entertainment. I can talk about history. Yeah. But well, we're definitely going to schedule that time, though. All right. All right. I'm with that. All right, beloved. Yes, sir. Yo, you have been real. I thank you. And let's talk in text in a minute, man. Yes. Okay. We'll do. Talk in a minute, brother. Yep. Yep. That concludes another episode of The Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. We hope you found this episode informative and enlightening. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please call 609-731-9311 or email kevin at minding-our-business.com. We look forward to joining us for our next one. Until next time.